Uh, good afternoon, one and all, and welcome you all on the second day of IEEE SPS Forum World 2.0, Women in Leading Technology. Uh, good afternoon, Nirali ma'am. Myself, good Dr. K. Patak, and I have been working as an assistant professor at SCAT Engineering College. So today uh, we have our eminent speaker, Nirali Bhatia ma'am. Uh, she is cyber... Uh, psychologist and psychotherapist. So I would like to introduce her by just briefing out her profile. So Nirali Ma'am is an accomplished consulting psychologist and psychotherapist with over two decades of experience in uh, web technology. Her area of expertise lies in cyber psychology and she has studied impact of technology on human behavior and mind. That is the today's latest disease of every human being. She is also certified cognitive behavior therapist and internet addiction therapist. In addition to her clinical work, she has uh, she is also a well-known speaker and have, uh, have delivered a TEDx talk on cyber psychology, which is indicative of her profound knowledge and expertise in the field. She is a corporate trainer for Porsche and has conducted over 200 workshops and training. Ketkimen, your audio is not coming. Am I audible? Yes, yes. now you are audible. OK, OK, thank you. So sorry to interrupt uh, or digital technology interruption. So we yes. have about this guest speaker. Uh, her profile is like uh, today's demanding. And without wasting much of the time, uh, we welcome you, Nirali ma'am. And I would like to also request all the students if they can also insist their parents to join this session to have an idea about today's cyber technology and adverse effect and how psychologically you can be trapped with this technology. So without wasting much of the time, I welcome you, ma'am. Now podium is yours, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Pathak, and thank you, IEEE, for uh, having me over here and recognizing, uh, you know, this topic, basically the digital hygiene or the need of internet etiquettes as an important point to address. So thank you so much. Uh, just allow me a moment to share my screen. Uh, is my screen visible? And screen is not there. proper. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay, now it is proper. now it visible. Yeah, just a sec. I believe now it will be good uh, and clear, right? Uh, Again, it is good. Actually, the when you are making probably the screen as a full screen, then right. uh, the content won't be the vis visible one. Now, is it clear? No, ma'am. Oh, it's not yet? OK. Yeah, it is now visible. Yeah. But it'll become very small. So let me let me just stop sharing and try once again. Normally, it does not have an issue when uh, we make it full screen. So let me just try once again. Is it clear no, now? It's clear, clear. Yes. OK. So let's begin. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Pa I mean, rather Professor Patak, for my introduction. And uh, uh, like explain. 
you know, I come across this question very often that what is cyber psychology and is it a very new field? So I'll just take a minute to explain that uh, cyber psychology is not a new field. It is more than 25, 26 years old field and established field. However, in India, it started getting recognized as a separate field uh, only when we all started using, uh, you know, the cyberspace more and more extensively. So to be very precise, from the pandemic time, this field got its due recognition in our country. What I do primarily is uh, uh, an extensive research on how internet technology is impacting our mind, behavior, actions. Today, internet has become an extremely integral part of our lives. We cannot imagine a world which is not connected through internet. I mean, just imagine if, if one, two, three days without any connectivity, can we really feel normal? We cannot. It starts impacting our communication, our education, profession, all other areas. So while we all have started uh, you know, using technology extremely rampantly we haven't got enough time to understand its effects to understand how to use it correctly so you know every time i give this example which is very easy to relate it's like during the pandemic or a little before that we all got a car and a key to drive the car but very few of us actually got time or put in effort to learn the driving learn the traffic rules, learn about your vehicle, and that's where all the problems have begun. Like any other coin, even the cyber world has two sides. Where One where it is extremely, extremely uh, useful space, and the second uh, side or the other side of it is it is also vulnerable. Uh, it is also a space which is a breeding ground for criminals and hence the growing cyber crimes, which are impacting in all areas of life, not just financially, but very largely emotionally and mentally. Reason being cyberspace is an psychological space. It's a virtual space. We're not doing things which are tangible. We cannot feel it. We cannot touch it. We can only and only, uh, you know, understand it, visualize it, and just feel it. So that's where it becomes more emotionally triggering. And hence, to understand a little bit about how this entire internet space impacts us individually at an emotional level, at a psychological level, is the first and the most significant step to keep ourselves safe and for a very, very meaningful purpose. So I'm trying to cover in today's presentation uh, uh, just uh, one minute again, Nirali, ma'am. Uh, your uh, screen, screen is, is blur. blur. Okay. It's only showing me to exit full screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. No worries. Yes. Because the problem is if yes, I don't perfect. keep. Yeah. Yes. You are not able to see that uh, in the back. Uh, that's what. Now, now it's a visible huh. perfectly, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, but is it readable to you all if I keep it this? Yes. Size? Yes. Yes. Yes, it's okay. readable. So, yeah. so we will keep it this size. I'll try and yes. hide the panel if possible. So at least we have it. Uh... Huh. Is this better? Yes, uh, the upper portion. Yeah, perfect, perfect now. Now perfect. <laughs> yes. No, the problem is that it's... Uh, hold on, hold on. It, it will not work like this. It's visible. It's better, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. Right. it is better. So, so while the entire cyber safety series is a very uh, vast series and there are again, a lot of aspects sorry. to cover. Yeah. Again, again, it's showing click to exit full screen mode. I think there is a, some issue when you do a full screen at that time. Once you start your speech again, it come in the blur mode. No, so what's happening? I'm, I'm understanding what's happening over here, but I don't know how to because in the past I've not had issues. Mm -hmm. So I'm also trying to figure out what will work better. 
Yeah. But otherwise, let's just keep it like this. So yeah. I may yes. just have to that's, scroll that's it. Better. Yes. That's better. Yes. You just uh, right? scroll down like this only. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Let's okay. let's do it like that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, we are covering two aspects, which is digital hygiene and digital etiquette. Uh, these two aspects are like two important wheels of you know a car has four wheels so these are two important wheels of safety it will help us understand that device which is the medium through which we connect to internet what all things can we do at that level uh, as you know as we all understand the word hygiene especially post pandemic it is very very prominent word and i'm sure each one of us understands that it's it's basically special care and this is what is required in the cyber world also so that's what uh, we will try and understand that what's that special care we need to do and in what all activities while the other is about etiquette it's about understanding certain rules uh, which can help us have a better behavior online and that behavior in turn can safeguard us and you know keep us safe rather than becoming a victim so let's start with digital hygiene in very simple terms it is nothing but a practice of you know, being responsible online. Like I explained, as the word hygiene means, that you need to take that extra effort, that little care of what can keep us safe. Uh, like how you keep, uh, take care of, you know, putting a screen guard on your mobile, you put a cover to your mobile, that is to from the physical damage. But the hygiene covers the area where the content or the programs in your mobile app the data in your app how do we protect that the screen guard and the back cover is not going to be enough to protect the data and the damage is not just to the physical device it's much more when it is a loss of data so the essentials that we will cover today is the password hygiene in terms of device what all we do in terms of our browsing habits shopping habits and social media these are most common activities that we do online or in the cyberspace and i'm trying to cover these all so let's begin with the password hygiene password is like a key to your bank locker a key to your house so without going it uh, you know without saying it goes that you don't need to share it and gone are the days where we were actually using passwords. Today, we need to move on to pass phrases. Phrases that are easy to understand and that are very difficult to crack. See, password is a gateway to your data, whether it is your mobile password, whether it is your social media account password, whether it is your email account password, or any other vault or locker, wherever you have your data. And, and you know, data has been compared as essential as oil so while we have got internet free the price that we are paying for this free thing is by our own data so you can understand the value of that data and why the need to protect so i've tried and given here some very very simple cues how you can make your passwords extremely complex at the same time remembering it becomes easier uh, is my screen very readable to you all? Can you all read the examples that I have put up? Yes, ma'am. OK, perfect. So five rules for the passwords. Number one, it has to be long and it has to be complex. Complex for the system, not for you. See, there is there are these criminals. They are not talking to you to hack your password. They are tracking through the code. So they are the algorithms that they set in, which will, you know, try different different combinations to crack the passwords so the complexity has to be for the system and not for you to remember then it has to be be a phrase phrase becomes easier for us to uh, you know memorize it if you have to save it you can either write it in a physical pen and paper where you know you can keep it safe but if you think that's not an option for you then use paid vaults memorizing multiple passwords is not easy for a lot of people 
you keep forgetting of course eventually we all are moving to passwordless uh, you know uh, systems but it'll still take time for the transition to happen until then using vaults is a safer idea and go for the paid vaults what these vaults do is that they encrypt your password only when you you know enter a certain key which is the key to access the vault is when it decrypts and it shows you a readability so even if the vault is hacked nobody can get your password do not save it in any browser or so and try and keep it in your mother tongue because it becomes very difficult to establish any logic for an algorithm to crack that kind of password so i've given an example over here uh, you know if you all can read that example and try and understand what it is great so take 5 seconds to do that but uh, after 5 seconds i'll tell you what it is so i am a gujarati and i've kept a phrase in my mother tongue which is very common which is called kemcho what i've done is the phrase is easier for me to remember and in that kemcho there are certain alphabets which have a representative or a corresponding special character like c can be exchanged with a bracket instead of o i can put a digital number 0 came cho so it is uh, came cho and then i've add bhai that is instead of b i have written 8 so h goes at it is instead of a at the rate and then for i i've added exclamation mark so in this way these phrases become easier for us to remember that i know that you know for next 15 days or next two months before i change the password it is came cho you can i'll give you another tip like you know if if you want ideally you have to change it within you know a month but otherwise 3 months is a good time to change your passwords keep it as per latest trends what's trending let's say if you're a movie buff keep it to the movie that you saw last let's say you've seen jawan last abbreviate jawan and make it in your mother tongue as in you know mala jawan awardle or mane jawan bahu gamyu in in whatever tongue you want to and that's how you create a password and use it for your multiple this thing you can change a few characters so like if it is for your uh, twitter account so if you see the second uh, example in the point number 2 i have given it's a nursery rhyme and at the rate i have written bird bird stands for twitter in those days the logo of twitter was a bird so so that's how it becomes easier if you see the example in the first one it's pooja shah but em em stands for email so the same puja shah i can use i made it into pogo and shah so it's it's for my convenience so that's how you can make your passwords amazingly strong easy to remember no need of vaults nothing you can very well remember them but if you have to use i've given examples of some good vaults uh, last pass is something that i have used personally and i can vouch for it that it's fantastic then let's move to the digit device hygiene we all spend tons of money on our devices but we fail to invest in good antivirus an absolute must for an android device apple device comes with an operating system which is highly secure it's not like it's not breakable but it's very highly secured compared to an operating system in an android phone and hence the need for antivirus is big you have to ensure that you have an active antivirus a good antivirus which you have not uh, you know just put it for name sake but the one which actively covers all the important uh, softwares in your device then the softwares of the operating system need to be updated very regularly this is where the loopholes are patched up and the update comes a lot of us keep procrastinating remind me later remind me later remind me later because we are worried that our phones will become slow or um, what if it doesn't support or it will take too much time etc but if you don't do that this procrastination can cost you a major loss of data app permissions and settings while downloading apps we are in so much hurry now that the cricket season is starting i know a lot of people who downloaded many apps to stay updated on you know what's what's going to be the whole world cup scenario and stuff we don't take extra effort to see <clears throat> whether it's a credible app what kind of rating does it have 
and terms and conditions are difficult to read and so on. so because we are in a hurry we'll quickly do all the settings yes 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 but before you go to bed in the night make sure every day you take up five apps look at them use your common sense let's say for example like in mumbai we have an app called zepto which we use for grocery ordering now you know after the day i wanted grocery immediately my mother in law downloaded that app she's not going to read terms and conditions and stuff and she ordered her grocery and she got the first uh, order discount and she was very excited in the night i sat with her and said let's look at the settings while installing all the apps ask for a lot of settings like camera access contacts access earphones access uh, microphone access everything they ask then i i asked her that what, do you do any kind of video call with zepto people is there any provision for a face id recognition or something why does it need access to your camera why does it need access to your contacts go and disable all of them and if the app will still work it means it's a genuine app location sharing always keep it at when in use or only when you manually go and set it see these are the ways a lot of your data is procured by the companies which may not have your best interest and the responsibility lies with you so make sure that all your permissions settings privacy settings all of this you check at least once there are people who don't do it till the lifetime they wouldn't even know what their phone settings are or so in so you cannot say that okay i own a car but i have no idea that where to fuel it from or what what to do when a tire uh, is punctured or uh, you know uh, how do i know what problem is why my key is not start i mean why the car is not start you have to have some knowledge about it right so that's exactly what is applicable over here as well next let's move on to online shopping hygiene most of us are shopping online either by apps or by browsers if we are doing using browsers then we have to make sure that the site is https s stands for secured server unfortunately this is now so affordable the certificate https that even the criminals have started using it so this cannot be your only source of relying you also have to make sure that you've done some background check on this you know a lot of people are even shopping on social media because a lot of offers come in promotional ads come in and you know we like the visual we like it's it's navratri time and even this morning even i got some you know this where there were beautiful ghagra cholis and i was also like wow and and at, at unbeatable price so you are tempted that okay let me go and check and see what it is but make sure you do some due diligence ki kahan se shop kar rahe ho kon hai ye uh what read some reviews read some uh, you know uh do a google search on them see what kind of company this is talk to them figure out and then place order even if you say no no i will do a cash on delivery i will check the product and pay the cash it doesn't work okay you refuse to pay this thing they are going to go and malign you online that this customer has you know cheated me has done this and this and then so you are going to invite another form of bullying trolling etc so it's better to be safe than to be sorry so check for all these things when you are using any apps of course now rbi guidelines have made it uh, you know very uh, for for all these apps not to store our cards or so but there are still some who are storing or still some browsers where we are storing our payment details and card details stop doing that identify the url and i will show you the example no using public wifi when you are making a transaction public wifi is like of railway station of starbucks of hotels you know which are used by multiple people have the least security and are very highly trackable and crackable so avoid that avoid signing into your accounts from any kind of public wifi and try and do all the transactions only from one device so you can maintain a good hygiene on that device as well the best or the safest form of payment out of all is any guesses it's the credit card because with the credit card you are not immediately paying there's a credit card company in between which can help you if there's something that goes wrong 
the best thing to do is have a separate credit card with a minimal limit only for your online transactions credit card companies are dying to give you cards take it and use them for your online payments lot of us indians are using upis remember upi is an instant withdrawal from your account and if you're not sure how does upi work when do i scan the qr code and when do i not then stay away from it instead credit card is a better option when i was talking about you know identify the url so this is it see if i show you a page like this it's exactly how amazon's page looks like if you open it from a mobile mobile will display it but it will hide the browser you have to scroll up to see and if you look at the url this is where the url comes in it is not amazon speech and that's how very commonly the criminals will do that here this particular case it is still very evident that it is not amazon but you will also have web urls like you know amazon.in is the india this thing they may have changed to a m a z zero on instead zero m instead of o so you have to be very careful of what kind of uh, you know url this is is it the same thing or is it not identify those urls especially when you're landing on new websites especially when you're on your banking websites a lot of frauds have happened because of this now let's move to your browsing hygiene i don't have to say but yes there are still people who don't know what's an incognito or a private browsing mode every device which has a browser that is uh, the popular ones are chrome firefox and safari if you're using an apple phone by default there is a safari browser browser is an interface through which we access different websites and uh, if you're using android phone then google chrome is the uh, default browser all these browsers have mode which is a private browsing mode in some they call it incognito in some they call it private mode why use this so what it does it it does not save your digital footprints so it does not save your browsing history and hence how does it so what you're doing online is not visible uh, to these browsing companies who can then send you the relevant ad or you know shadow marketing and stuff like that so that's where it helps plus if your device is you know in hands of someone else they can't see your footprints or your browsing footprint so incognito helps like that whenever you're filling any forms online your browser will always prompt you save the password or save these uh, field information please disable especially if you are sharing your device with any other family member or a friend clear your histories often because these all histories and the cookies and all of this give out information on you on your browsing habits they can be used by the criminal to exploit you or to target you block notifications and pop ups most kind of malwares are sent to us in very attractive pop up formats and the cross button is so tiny that instead of click clicking on that cross we end up clicking on it and we don't realize that in the background it installs the softwares into our devices and then our devices are compromised so it's better in every browser there is a setting uh, you know option on the top over there you go and disable by default any kind of pop ups so whenever the pop ups are disabled it shows over here you know where i'm moving my mouse it shows over here that the pop up was blocked if you want to see it enable you can click on it and it will show you the pop up as well but if you don't want it will not come in your face while you are in middle of something else because that is the time we accidentally click on these kind of pop ups and fall into trouble now the most important one because cyber uh, social high media is a hub for maximum cyber crimes and i'm not against the use of social media but it is important for all of us to understand and implement certain rules 
of this you know how to behave in social media see while this medium is giving us the freedom of speech they are failing to restrict and you know remind us to execute our responsibility also so a lot of us fail to behave responsibly over here and hence we need to learn these hygiene factors the most important rule that you remember is to always be polite no matter what the content over here is extremely triggering and personal in nature it feels personal and that's why we have a reaction instead of a response avoid having multiple accounts i've seen a lot of people the, the moment they forget their passwords or they have not used that account for some time they'll immediately create another one it doesn't work like that the more number of accounts you have the more footprints you have and then it's the whole complicated mess that comes with it no tagging others without consent i've had victims who have been tagged to obscene content causing massive defamation to them so yes while social media like instagram and all it does not directly show up on your uh, uh, you know page if somebody has tagged you it comes as a notification but in other platforms like facebook and all if you have not kept that setting on then the moment somebody tags it also starts showing on your timeline and on their timeline so keep that setting at your end also and as a hygiene practice or an etiquette also follow that don't tag so let's say if i am you know from our today's this uh, uh entire presentation if i have to post some pictures make it a habit it takes 2 to 10 seconds to just ask that uh, is it okay if i post and tag you if the person says no respect that and don't tag them forward only fact check information so i'm going to share one example with you that what happens when we don't fact check uh couple of years ago in fact not couple more than that i think approximately in 2014 or 15 i was doing a massive campaign with pune cyber cell on uh cyber crimes and our a campaign was known as we fight cc that is we fight cyber crimes so during that campaign um, i was talking to one of these police officers and you know he was he was very stressed about a particular case and he was like ma'am can you help me or can you tell me i'm not understanding how do i deal with this parents and i was like okay tell me what's the case so he said that uh, you know there's this mother and her child every day they have to come to police station and they keep telling us that you know my child is not able to go to school not able to go to school what do i do sir kuch karo sir kuch karo now i was also surprised ki police kya kar rahe hain bachcha kyun nahi school ja pa raha hai so i asked them so the story in that was that one fine day the child did not return home in time and was not accessible matlab wo phone uska bhi nahi lag raha tha driver ka bhi nahi lag raha tha so his sister had made a whatsapp uh, profile i mean a photo of his with a you know message saying that if have you seen my brother then please contact me on this i mean of course she did that after asking people who she knew about her brother and uske baad mein we all do that right to help so she sent out on a few groups and like you know we all who want to help others we start sending them we start forwarding those messages अब बच्चा तो आ गया रात में ही केम लिटिल लेट बट इलेवन इलेवन थर्टी तक वो आ गया घर पे नहीं एक्सप्लेन मोबाइल में बैटरी नहीं था गाड़ी का दो टायर पंक्चर एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट हैपन एंड द ड्राइवर आल्सो डिड नॉट हैव बैलेंस इन हिज मोबाइल टू कॉल अप एंड स्टफ लाइक दैट एंड ऑफ कोर्स द चाइल्ड डिड नॉट रिमेंबर मोबाइल नंबर ऑफ हिस्स फैमिली बाई हार्ट आई मीन मेनी ऑफ यू डोंट सो द वॉज नो पॉइंट ऑफ कॉलिंग फ्रॉम समबडी एल्स डिवाइस एज वेल सो the sister put out another message saying that thank you everyone for your help my brother has come back home safely uh and the matter was resolved according to them but next day when the brother goes to the school somebody has received that message he sees the boy and he takes the boy to the police station ki sir ye bachcha gum gaya ye message aaya hai you know the family actually disabled the number also because they were tired of explaining everyone ke liye purana message hai uh, abhi to aisa kuch nahi hai my brother is safe and sound and stuff so this is from this one case we can understand that 
even if your intention is to help if you don't fact check how much harm are you causing the family was so stressed and they were also scared ki yaar aise to har kisi ko ye photo dikhega mere bhai ka and i don't know where they will take him some good people are taking him to police station what about others so remember anything that goes in internet is or on on social media is always there even if you delete your account you uh, completely you know damage your device everything still that will be there yes as a common person you and me may not be able to track it but the criminals and the investigators both can track them down so be very responsible with what you are sharing and what you are forwarding as well it takes a minute to ask that do you know this person whoever has sent you the message if they say no then just either you do your due diligence if you want to help help or please leave it at that there will be some rightful people who will do it or just go and show it to the police that ye aisa hai if you are so responsible and you want to help out people in distress keep your post limited maintain a good footprint online so that it's not only trivia it's not only your selfies it also has some meaningful content because your today's fun trivia entertainment should not cost you your tomorrow's future uh, dream college or dream job you know there was one uh, incident that was highlighted in the media also a few years ago indian student was very proud that his research was accepted or rather he was accepted as a research student by harvard on scholarship and that's a big achievement right harvard's everybody's dream university to be in and a few days later they revoked his admission reason being inappropriate social conduct two years prior to application or rather in his earlier college days he had tweeted in response to very extreme religious content it was linked to islamic religion and some very extreme remark he had made years ago two three years ago that cost him his dream university so you understand the footprints are extremely important so post limited relevant stuff not every message requires your attention not every post requires your comment if you don't have anything to contribute stay away do not mark relationships online you know we all do that i mean instagram does not have that but yes facebook and there are few more other platforms where we have that option of marking mumbai had one of the biggest robberies some years ago thanks to the marking uh the relationship and checking in when the robbers were caught they, they said that bhabhi ne facebook pe dala tha ki ye theater mein check in kiya hai aur bhaiya aur mummy ji ke sath because they mark no and that's where they planned they knew that the family is not returning for next 3 4 hours so this is what it can cost you keep your account private if it is not meant for any kind of professional uh sharing and the most important thing try and mind your own business online like i said that not everything needs your attention these are some examples of what you post tells a lot about what's going on when you and you know this is what the perpetrators actually are tracking or are they are. you know the uh, the blue whale challenge i'm sure most of you all would have heard about it their modus operandi was on this it was not a game which anybody could download from an app store or a play store it was a challenge they used to invite these teenagers whom they found vulnerable and it was from these kind of posts if you if you find somebody posting this you know regularly or uh, frequently in last few days it is a kind of indication that there is something wrong because you posting very similar content when you are doing a check in this was one of my uh, you know clients who actually had a random man standing with her her name welcome so and so at the airport for her and it actually freaked her out like who is this person she doesn't even know or these all challenges and the extra selfies and images that we share these are nothing but the fodder for the artificial intelligence 
to actually get better and better and better. So if not required, please don't do that. If you still want to participate, don't share it publicly and tag other people. Share it in your private groups. So a takeaway for you is that your hygiene is your responsibility and nobody else's. Now let's move on to digital etiquette. What we mean by digital etiquette, as the name suggests that it's a code of conduct. Though, like I said, that this entire digital space is not uh, owned by any one person who has decided a code of conduct or something. It's not belonging to one society where a code of conduct is uh, designed and determined. It is on to us to ensure that we behave responsibly. And there are there are a few general ones which have come up. So let me ask you that which according to you is the right definition of digital etiquette? Just take five, six seconds to have a look and understand. And in your heads, just decide which one is it. Since I cannot, you know, interact right now looking at you all. So we are doing it in this other manner. If you have identified which is the ideal definition for a digital etiquette, let's see. It's actually all of them. It is an electronic standards code conduct or procedure. Like I said, it's a code of conduct. It's also a rule of behavior while using technology enabled devices. It's also an etiquette for nonverbal communication and integrity or sense of self-management and general responsibility. In short, it is a rule book for you to watch your own behavior. Without this kind of you know, code of conduct or an etiquette, the entire digital world is a hostile place of fake information, misinformation, false comforts, and pretense. And that's why the need of netiquettes. So digital etiquettes are comprised of these two elements, communication and golden rules that we follow as netiquettes. Now that we all have moved to texting from talking, especially the younger generation, we have to understand that how different is the communication in the way our brain processes it now. You know, human mind was wired or is still wired to understand communication in its totality with a mix of certain uh, senses being triggered. There's a body language, which is your non-verbal communication, and there is the words, which is sound, there is eye. These senses are triggered. But in the digital space, it is only the sight. Sometimes, yes, if it's a video, then there is a sound also, but there's no body language. So we have to learn and identify the digital body language. And why is it important? So let me give you an example. So right now I'm you know, conducting this particular workshop. And if my phone rings and it continues to ring, so I put an auto responder saying that I am busy, I cannot talk right now. The person who is at a receiving end has not received, uh, has not heard me saying it, has not seen me saying it. So it is on to them how they infer it. If that person is in an emotionally un or distressful state, anxious state or something, they can also take it negatively that I am calling her so many times and look at the attitude. She's only sending me, I'm busy, I'm busy, as if I'm in sync. Example of, you know, WhatsApp messages, blue tick ho gaya, reply nahi aya. You start thinking that I am, he or she is avoiding me, I'm not important, etc., etc. But if you have heard them saying that, hey, I'm busy, I can't talk right now, the whole context changes. So that's that shift I'm talking about. So in order to you know, be a good texter and make sure that your communication is clear without it being, you know, having the space to be misinterpreted, you have to understand certain key elements of the cyberspace. One, the sensory dimension, which I said that, you know, the effect of audio and video simulation in the cyberspace is different than in the real space. And hence, you know, remember always at what time you're sending, what kind of message you're sending. Then the another one is temporal dimension, which is the use of time. 
in digital space, we have the liberty of asynchronous communication, as in you can leave messages. I am writing to you now, the other person can reply at their own convenience. While in the face-to-face -face world, it is always synchronous. I'm saying now, the response is coming now. So when there is a lag in the response, we also have to consider the fact of who the person is. Will, they, will it make them anxious? Think about it and then text it. You know, a lot of times, a lot of people do this that, hey, guess what? They send that kind of message and then they disappear. So imagine what happens to the other person, right? So that's the temporal dimension. Then the entire digital body language, which is missing because you can't see, you, you miss out on so many cues. While we use emojis, they are not the digital body language cues. So make sure you're using the right platform to communicate the right thing, especially in the professional field and so also in the personal field. WhatsApp is a very personal messaging space, a personal communication space. So use it for that purpose. Social media is social communication. Use it for that. But a lot of people, you know, interchange and very conveniently because they feel that this is more safer or this is going to be a little more uh, where, you know, I can get away with disappearing messages. Is that don't choose it by the features that the platform is giving. Choose it by the significance of your communication, the purpose of the communication. Beware of the tempting abbreviations. You cannot get away saying anything and then putting none. It's, I mean, it's a misconception that, you know, it's, it's going to safeguard you or just putting a wink emoji. Using of emojis also comes with a great responsibility or they will become like loose emotions. So mind that as well. Please use grammar and autocom because the autocompletes of the mobiles can at times completely change the context. So it's better to use apps like Grammarly or so to help you make sure that what you're trying to say, it's all proper. There's no grammar missing, especially a lot of us use, uh, you know, English nowadays. It's a combination of Hindi and English. Because of the growing artificial intelligence, all these, you know, uh, grammar leaves and your Google corrects and all, they are also capable of taking care of the grammar even in the English. Resist multitasking. The Zoom doom is where, you know, the example of when during pandemic, Zoom was at its boom. There have been a lot of people who have faced that mishap of uh, the audio being on and, you know, they have been caught talking something else. Their private chats have become public or their private acts have become public or so. So be careful of your multitasking. Patience, this virtue is diminishing because of the instant gratification and 24-7 availability and accessibility. So you have to make a conscious effort of practicing the patience. Remember to pause a fraction of seconds, but it can save you a lot of damage. Any post, any tweet that you come across, it can trigger multiple emotions and it can make you impulsive to react if you don't practice that pause. Control your impulse urge. That is, so Rethink is a very beautiful app designed by a young girl to combat bullying she was herself a victim and she wanted you know everyone to be very polite it's a very beautiful uh, keyboard app what it does is the moment you type anything rude like shut up stupid bad or any other bad word it will give you a prompt that hey this is not a nice word would you want to replace it what it does it it just gives you that pause that was required for you to calm down or you to rethink about it that should I really write stupid? You tell somebody on a face, on their face that, hey, come on, yaar, are you stupid? There's a body language, there's a tone to your voice which tells them you're joking and it's not offensive. But you put it on text. None of this is there. It's all missing. So the way the other person will feel about it is based on what is their emotional frame of mind. So why use these kind of words or you know uh, expressions which can be perceptive and can impact your relationship and like i said that you've got to outsmart the autocorrect devil because it can actually create a lot of trouble so be very careful don't be in a hurry hurry to send i've got cases where you know instead of writing uh, some word 
some some very very non professional words have gone into the professional communication and last but not the least we come to the golden rules for internet these rules were identified by virginia shia in her research and and you know that's where it became very uh, acceptable to a large audience because they are very practical 10 simple rules first remind yourself that on other side of the device there is a live human being because you cannot see them you cannot empathize and sensitively respond you end up reacting behave responsibly and ethically just because you are in the comforts of your house and from the comforts of your very very personal device you don't think that you can get away doing anonymity in cyberspace is a myth until someone challenges it familiarize yourself with the technology that you're using what's the purpose who is the audience what kind of features do it does it have and what kind of communication is appropriate through that particular technology and environment and yes all the permissions and settings and privacy all of that as well respect other people's time and bandwidth so keep your online commitments at the same time like i said that if you're not going to be available to continue the conversation don't just create these kind of scenarios where you leave other person waiting for you or anxious about something that you started and you're not able to complete put yourself in a very good you know image positive image a person who is sensible and responsible share your knowledge and expertise is where the content responsibility comes it's also called as your social currency is what you have to be mindful your social currency is uh what you spend on all the content that you receive so it's your like it's your comments it's your uh posting and forwarding be responsible with that keep the flame wars under control that's where the trolling happens like i gave you an example that you know something some post or some tweet which you don't agree to you don't have to immediately jump on that if it really matters call up that person and talk to them rather than going on a word war over a text or on social media and if you don't know them it shouldn't matter choose your battles wisely be forgiving of other people's mistakes because it's a human on other side and it is human to make mistakes and be very careful of not repeating those mistakes respect people's privacy understand consent online and last but not the least that the power of freedom of to so expression that you have on this cyberspace don't exploit it use it very very impactfully don't abuse that you know like our great spider man's uncle has also said with with freedom comes a lot of responsibility and you have to exercise that as well so the etiquettes are your key to ensure that you leave positive footprints footprints are inevitable whatever you do it is going there is going to be a footprint but you have to be a little conscious about what kind of footprints are you leaving because they are going to form your online reputation and you know people like us are hired to do a social uh, background check behavioral analysis or net profiling these are the terms that are used so the takeaways for you are learn the digital etiquettes follow the hygiene and understand and remember the cyber effect on you it's going to be very different for different people yeah. so that is from my side if you have any questions please go ahead and share them thank you ma'am it is really wonderful uh, information that everyone should at least if precisely follow then they won't be trapped in uh, cyber world so my question is what you have talked about some hygienic etiquettes and all that thing but i yeah. would like to ask apart from social media also mm -hmm. as you have mentioned you should not have uh, more accounts but yes. uh, preferably when you are working in a different profession 
at that time you have one working mail that is your Correct. professional mail second one would be your personal mail and third would be whatever you are using as a social media so probably two or three accounts you are carrying with you as a right. email official email so yes. is there any uh, that precautionary thing that we should maintain while maintaining the password because we are very habituate to have a password at during multiple email accounts or something like that true so uh, having separate email accounts is not at all a problem because email is not a social space it's your you know private uh, email id and only you alone access it what i meant by multiple accounts was not having multiple social media presence so that is i hope that is clear now when you have multiple email accounts and i think most of us have because professional account we use for a different purpose and personal email ids are we is what we use for different purposes when it comes to password management like you know i gave you an example that uh, make a habit let's say let's say we are on today uh, 7th of october let's say on 10th of october you change your passwords you can change across all your passwords you can keep the phrase as common that's something that you only will know so let's take for example the came show phrase phrase now if we are doing the came show phrase in the end you can change a few characters for your personal email you can put it as pem for your professional email you can you can put it as prem i'm just giving you an example you can come up with your own so that way the the password remembering becomes very easy for you the same phrase you can use for your social media id see in social media you don't have to remember it because you are it is an app based which you don't uh, unless you log out from it you don't have the need to key in the password again you can save it on that app and it stays encrypted for it because it's your personal device it is still safe yes if you're sharing the device with someone then it's better to log out of that app before you hand over the device to somebody else so that is how you can manage these passwords easily without having the stress to remember multiple passwords yeah second I, I question hope this helps yes yeah, it is really uh, uh, true that uh, how we can maintain all these uh, professional as well as working email with the minimum remembrance of the password second Correct. thing uh, my question is what whenever we are using any social media on our mobile as well hmm. as on desktop like whatsapp web or something like that that at that time uh, how would you suggest that uh, how, uh, how would we maintain our security aspect when we are using it the multiple gadgets correct so try and avoid as much as you can yes whatsapp very commonly because it's a mode of communication and now a lot of people are sharing important files and you know uh, documents through whatsapp we are using it on web also if see even the laptops are today personal devices in many houses but in many houses they are shared also if it is a shared device make sure you always log out from that particular social media account and if you are going to log in log out log in log out then the wifi that you use should be your private wifi your home wifi and not a shared wifi so let's say if you are traveling uh let's say if you are at a railway station and at that point of time you should not you should avoid logging into your social medias or basically anywhere where you have to sign up you can use that wifi for browsing for searching information that is all right in incognito mode you can do that but whenever you're logging in and you're keying in your password or something that's where it becomes troublesome so for shared devices or you're doing it through this thing see if it is one account only whether so let's say for example if it's your instagram account whether you access from your laptop or from your uh, mobile the instagram hygiene can stay the same but if you're sharing devices then you have to make sure that you take that extra step of you know logging out always yeah thank you ma'am uh, is there any question from the participants uh, yeah. yes any query uh -huh. Um, yeah, I, mean, I just want to yes. ask that in any case in the private uh, or we can say in the public space you need to use the internet right kind of thing Correct. so what to do at that time so like i said that 
for example uh, you know if you're at the airport or if you have checked into a hotel you're going to stay there for two days and you need to connect to the wi-fi or something don't do uh, things that are going to require you to key in your passwords that's all i'm saying see when you're connecting your device uh, to to the hotel network i'm taking that as an example because it's very common scenario with a lot of us on your device on your instagram or on your facebook or your whatsapp you already entered password you're not going to key in them so you can use it but if you've logged out and you have to log in again then no let's say if you if you're planning to use a banking app please avoid then instead connect to your data but not the wifi which is public and it's not private so that is where so transactions uh, wherever you have to because bank uh, apps will never save your password every time you open the app you have to key in your password then also key in an otp and then only you can proceed further the public wifi is are able to see your entire mapping you know like okay what keys are you pressing for your password what is the otp and your devices can be compromised i'm not saying all public wifi is are uh, always hacked or something but they are very easy to hack so we must avoid them as a good hygiene practice use it for general browsing already the apps in which you have passwords keyed in and you can just open and scroll and all that no problem do not just log into anything if it's a shopping site where you're not going to save your card or something then you can so so i'll give you one simple example let's say now you visit another country I recently i had been to singapore and i had to download the app which would help me take the ticket for the metro and the cab and all because they have that system so i had to download that app now if i'm downloading i have to create an account also and because i had just landed in singapore i did not have a sim card so i had used the airport wifi so for which particular app am i creating or logging in it is for singapore purpose only there's not going to be any you know private sensitive data into it or something so that kind of calculated risk we can take because it was essential to do it and i'm not going to key in any of my you know transaction related stuff or something i just needed to see the timetables and stuff and then once i'm in hotel i mean of course i've got a card and then we use the data of that card so in india today mobile data is very cheap and network connectivity is good everywhere so please use your own hotspots and data if you have to do any kind of you know important work where financial transactions or logging into some systems or some softwares or some apps or websites then use data not the wifis which are not secure yeah i hope this answers your question Yes, ma'am. Yes, truly. Thank you so much. Welcome. Tijan, uh, there would be one uh, participant, mother. Hi, is raised hand. Yeah. Hi, I'm mother. Yeah. Hi, mother. Uh, assistant professor at Charu Sir University. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, my question is that after the hype of Chat GPT, uh, many people are using Chat GPT for writing professional email. Right. Anyone can normally understand it is written by ChatGPT with very decorative words, Correct. and which is not his or her own word. In which right. emotion or the uh, that the the thing that you want to convey is totally missing. So, Correct. how appropriate to use ChatGPT for such professional emails or writing? Um, so, let's understand the purpose of these emails. See. any communication what is our purpose whether it is by email or whether it is by chat ki samne wale ko mera main kya bolna chahti hu wo samajhna chahiye now if this mail uh, in that you are sending if it is a very formal email jisme i don't have to convey anything emotionally it's absolutely okay i am not at all against you know gpts you should use it but if you are going to be dependent on gpt and aap apna effort hi nahi daloge padhoge hi nahi ki kya likh ke de raha hai and aise copy paste kar doge then you can fall in trouble it's absolutely okay and don't shy away you can also you know mention it over there that i have taken uh, help of gpt to uh, compose this is it's meant for assisting us not replacing and to use chat gpt also is an art 
it's it's not like okay make a email for me if you're if you're depending like that then you're inviting trouble because eventually you will stop uh, you know and forget writing an email if you continuously depend on it yes if you use it to make a good email which is you you've written your own context that you know this is what i want to communicate aap apne shabdon mein gpt mein dalo and usko bolo ki theek hai can you make this better for me and it will give you in a good language make sure you read it before you send it to see that the context in it is in its place gpt can create problem when there is plagiarism in emails it's not about plagiarism it's about communication ki aap samne wale ko kya batana chahte ho everybody knows ki agar over formal email likha hai it can impact you agar aap us cause ke liye nahi likh rahe so for example if you are applying for a job if that job is about let's say hr wala hai to किस रोल के लिए अप्लाई कर रहे हो वट इज योर नेचुरल स्टाइल उसमें लिखोगे तो मच बेटर है टेक हेल्प ऑफ जीपीटी टू मेक दैट अ लिटिल मोर प्रॉपर इन टर्म्स ऑफ यू नो लैंग्वेज एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट बट डोंट डिपेंड ऑन इट दैट इज वॉट आई वुड रिकमेंड आई आई होप योर क्वेश्चन थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम Thank you very much for wonderful Pleasure. session, and you have solved our many queries so that we can also become digital hygienic when you are using any social media or any digital transaction while doing in Wi-Fi mode. So, as a token of appreciation, I would like to ask Pejal Ma'am, please, um, Pejal Ma'am, present memento for Nirali Ma'am. So thank you, Nirali Ma'am, uh, for a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. This is very sweet gesture. Thank you so much, Ma'am. My pleasure. We accept our invitation and be here and to inform us about very good information because every day we require this nowadays. Everyone are using a smartphone and downloading the and many applications. So it's very helpful. to each and every one either they are in the technical field or non technical field absolutely and see uh, lastly before going i would say that don't get overwhelmed ki baap re abhi itna sab karna padega no slowly slowly get on to the habit of these things jab covid hua to how eventually we got into the habit of washing our hands nicely right koi mm-hmm. next day to nahi shuru ho gaya so same way even in this if you're aware you can apply par agar pata hi nahi ho to kaise apply kare so that's the whole objective yeah so thank you once again for having me and uh, ma'am one one minute yes. uh, we have sure. one group photo with our participants okay. also so okay, all the participants mm-hmm. are requested to please turn on your video have a group photo with nirali ma'am neeta madam can you keep your camera turn Nine, turn by ninety degree. And Nirali Madam, we have our next speaker, uh, Disha Shah Madam, with us. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Nirali. I was just listening to you. Quite an insightful <laughs> session. Thank you. So all are ready. Yeah. Tejal Ma'am, just take a one click. on behalf of all of us i think tejal ma'am ka hi video on nahi hai baaki sab ka hai <laughs> <laughs> she might be busy in taking the clip only <laughs> uh, you all are busy let me scan i have taken photograph yes yes oh. but we want a photograph with you tejal ma'am that's why <laughs> नहीं तेजल मैम उस वीडियो इज ऑन अच्छा शी इज लॉग्ड इन फ्रॉम टू डेज या या लॉग इन इज विद अ नेम स्केट इमिट राइट परफेक्ट ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच आई होप नेक्स्ट टाइम वी डू इट इन पर्सन आई विल लव डेफिनेटली यू नो बिकॉज़ for 2 3 years we've only done online we also started missing that touch of seeing the live human beings in fact madam this time also we were in a plan to arrange it in a in person event like a but right. uh, because of the change in the schedule of the students it will be not possible for us to okay. make it in a 
offline. No, and of course, right now Gujarat is the hot property for the because of the World Cup going on. <laughs> mm-hmm. So travel would have also been really challenging. So yeah. definitely, in in a next uh, time, uh, we would be more happy to have you in a offline mode. Lovely. I would. It would be really my pleasure as well. I would look forward to that. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. I won't take much of your time. I'll thank see you, you all around. So yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Nita, ma'am. Huh. Yeah. Yes. Over to you. <laughs> thank yeah, you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, so, welcome once again to one and all uh, on the last session of the world that is the I Triple E S P S Forum on the Wall Two. So, I am very much thankful and heartily welcome uh, Miss Disha Shah. who had accepted our invitation for the talk which is the journey of an engineer turned into a planet first entrepreneur the title itself is very uh, like uh, amazing so we will like to hear from you but before that i will share your profile for the participants so miss disha sa boasts a remarkable track record in leadership and business development roles spanning various industry sectors and global regions including the USA Germany Hong Kong the Middle East and India currently she holds the position of founder and ceo at geofig a pioneering digital platform dedicated to reducing food and hospitality waste nearing their expiration dates coffee achieves this by motivating consumers to purchase short dated items through the enticing offers and transparent information about the remaining shelf life of the product in her previous role misha served as a senior vice president business at bobble ai here she spearheaded the company's innovation arm transforming budding concept into the sustainable Nita ma'am you are muted It was done but okay I had already unmuted from where it was muted Hello you just continue Okay so in her previous role uh, she served as the senior vice president business at Bobble AI here she spearheaded the company's innovative arm transforming budding concepts into the sustainable and independent business verticals additionally she led global technology alliance partnership for bobble ai facilitating the swift entry of indian and international tech firms into untapped mobile and internet user segments particularly those using the native languages before her tenure at bobble ai she had the position of director india at frankfurt payment gmbh the official investment promotion and marketing entity for the german metropolitan region in this capacity she oversaw the comprehensive strategy investor relations and image marketing efforts for the same company throughout the india so madam we welcome you for the last session and we are eager to hear from you thank you so much anita uh, ma'am i hope i am audible clearly yeah ma'am you are audible okay perfect uh, i will leave the sharing rights i, I think it says do not allow to share if i could just have to uh, yeah share then try now just uh not yet uh, just a minute By the way, I was not aware that this is the last session of the day, so I have to be really punchy and to the point, just to make sure that everybody is uh, kind of motivated enough to stay back until the end. Nisha <laughs> Shah. It's a D. Uh, should I type down my email address? Uh, 
Uh, no, it's already shared with her. Just a few minutes. Ma'am, your ID is Disha. Dos at the rate gmail dot com. I signed in using my different email ID. Yeah. Pardon, please. Uh, it's Disha D O S huh? at the rate gmail dot com. Okay. It's the same ID. Um. Yeah. Teacher, when I shared you the same ID, and even the meme is in the contributor role. Add as a co-host. Maybe, maybe now, yeah. now, now I'm able to. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. So okay. Yeah. yeah. Well. Okay. Right. So I hope my screen is visible now. Uh, thank you so much for the warm welcome and the kind words. Um, as uh, um, Adam just described, I am an engineer, uh, graduated from the GH Patel College of Engineering and Technology in 2006. I studied electronics and telecommunication back in the times when we were still studying about 4G, like 4G was a new and emerging thing. AI and ML were kind of unheard at that time. So that was when I uh, got done with my engineering, moved on to do my master's in electronics and telecommunication from the Illinois Institute of Technology in USA. A uh, post that I've worked in multiple roles across industry sectors and across also different geographies, right? So right after I graduated, I worked with Philips Healthcare in United States in an engineering uh, role in the R&D department, post which I re realized that I wanted to explore new and different things with my career tra trajectory. And that's how I slowly started moving to different areas such as business development, sales, marketing, Landed a job, as you rightly mentioned, with the German government, which was with the investment promotion arm of Frankfurt. Post that, I moved, started working with uh, an AI-based startup, a fast-growing AI company based out of Gurgaon called Pobble. And uh, yeah, so that has been my trajectory so far from an engineering, to, uh, from an engineering graduate to multiple, uh, exploring multiple uh, domains, multiple geographies in various capacities. But every, I mean, all throughout my journey, I was always uh, interested in um, entrepreneurship. Uh, I was always keen on picking up an idea that would eventually lead to some impact, um, whether it's social impact, environmental impact. And that's how I landed on the idea of GoFic, which was also, which came to me as part of my inspiration from travel across the globe. So um, let me take you through my journey from an engineer to uh, a planet first entrepreneur, right? So what exactly is planet first entrepreneurship? So how I look at it is it's basically, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, it's basically finding um, um, a business problem, finding a problem uh, to solve, which not only has a business use case, but it also has a great value in it for our planet Earth, for uh, the environment that we live in. Um, and uh, uh, and it does justice to uh, our environment or to the Earth that's supporting us, right? So a lot of businesses today are built on the fundamentals of pure exploitation of Earth's resources. And that is something that I was sure that I didn't, or, or I was not very keen on doing. And that's how I landed on the idea of GoFic, which is India's first digital and holistic solution that is aiming to solve the problem of expiry or close to expiry foods and cosmetic items, right? Um, let me take you through uh, the um, problem statement. Uh, am I audible enough? I'm not able to see the screen. So, uh, yes, yes ma'am. Ma yeah, you're right. Okay, right. So let me uh, talk you through the problem statement and what I encountered while talking to a lot of FMCG brands, right? Close to expiry inventory is a big problem with all FMCG brands. When I talk to so many of our partner brands, including some of the leading companies like Marico, uh, Cornitos Group, Forbidden Foods, there's a group called Nylons uh, based out of Pune and so many others. I found out that roughly 5% to 12% of the entire inventory belonging to these FMCG brands 
goes to waste uh, just because it is a close to expiry product right now think about it you and i as regular retail customers when we go to a supermarket or when we go to our normal kirana shop we tend to look at items compare dates on these items and tend to pick up a product which is which has longer shelf life remaining on it right so that's how in the process a lot of products still get um, left behind on the shelves ultimately they expire they go back to the brands and then there is no other option left but to destroy them right so the impact that i found or the problem statement that i found was that 5 to 12% of the inventory and if i look at so many different brands that are there in, there in the market today the amount of wastage of close to expiry products is huge the problem here like i said is not because the product is close to expiry and it is bad quality these products are still good in quality they are intact in taste because they are all sealed vacuum packed uh, handled properly and all right uh, and we are talking about packaged foods and cosmetics by the way right we are not talking about perishables like milk or um, cheese or, or or batter because obviously these items tend to kind of Uh, lose some of its taste and texture with time with the the perish fast perishable items but in in the case of packaged foods the items even if they are close to expiry they are still intact in taste they are still just as good and fresh as they were on day 1 because they are flushed using nitrogen to keep them fresh and tasting good right so the problem that i discovered was that it's not because it's a close to expiry product and it's bad quality but it's because of consumer perception even people like me or you who are educated um, uh, we have this mindset of going to uh, uh, supermarkets and just looking at a product which has a longer shelf life because that's just how we are all trained to look at these items right so uh, that's what that's another part of the problem which is lack of enough consumer education or the fact that nobody until now has talked so much about what happens to products once they expire the third problem statement that i encountered while talking to these brands again was that a lot of new age d2c brands are uh, entering the indian market today i'll give you an example when we were growing up kisan jam was probably the only jam that you and i had in our kitchens or nescafe coffee was the only brand of coffee that we were used to uh, drinking as a branded coffee um, back in uh, you know 10 to 15 years ago today in the market there are roughly 40 indian brands that are operating just in the segment of coffee there are probably 30 or 35 odd companies operating in the segment of peanut butters and jams and if i put together the number of brands that are uh, there from the imported products that also come into india the number of brands operating in every single segment is just exploding day by day it is similar to how you see in the west like any one of you who has gone to the western countries be it us be it uh, in malls in china in hong kong in europe their supermarkets are just flooded with tons and tons of brands and packaged food items and i think we in india are also looking at a similar scenario in probably the next 2 to 5 years right uh, just look just looking at the number of brands that are coming out in india uh, day by day these new age brands have very poor uh, forecasting mechanism the reason being they are new brands they are still testing the waters they still don't know which of their products will co- get consumed quickly which of their flavors will be liked by their consumers and which is by because of this un, uh, unreliable um, forecasting and planning a lot of products from these new brands also keep on being wasted uh, on the shelves of uh, of retail chains and supermarkets right so this is overall uh, the problem statement that i encountered by talking to so many different fmcg brands and my experience is not just limited to foods and beverages but we also talk to a lot of cosmetic players right uh, the same problem lot of new items being introduced in the cosmetics uh, uh, sector lot of uh, new variants flavors colors and shades and each of these items come with a best buy date or an expiry date and uh, that's where a lot of products also keep on uh, like getting expired on a daily basis and eventually wasted and trashed in the landfills right a fourth part of the problem which i'll very quickly also talk about is we talked about consumer perception and it being slightly biased towards close to expiry products a fourth part is because there is not enough awareness or nobody so far has really thought of talking about this problem there is little consumer education available in the market for example simple things like an expiry date is not the same as a best buy date and it can have a huge impact in terms of whether you can still continue to use a product even if it's way past its best buy date right so these are minor topics which 
because of lack of consumer education again um, uh, contribute to the problem of increasing waste of fmcg products so that's where uh, i together with my co-founder gaurav shah uh, we came up with the solution and our solution was simple we said let's simplify matters let's incentivize consumption of short dated items rather than its disposal right um so what do we do uh, currently at gofic we have onboarded currently 15 different fmcg brands all of which that i talked about earlier cornitos uh, marico uh, paper boat so on and so forth we we have onboarded these brand partners and as and when they have short dated inventory so as and when they have inventory in their warehouses which is not sellable through their retail channels so which is not accepted in a normal marwadi shop or on amazon or on flipkart or blinkit we aggregate all of that inventory at our warehouse in pune we check all of these items for safety efficacy and quality so we have tied up with certain lab partners to ensure that the products um, uh, although uh, uh, i mean uh, the brand partners give us all of the uh, uh, necessary sort of uh, safety and quality uh, you know, promises but we also do random sampling and testing of products at our end to ensure that products are still intact and are as promised by the brand so we do all of the testing sampling and then we list these pro- uh, products create visibility for them on our online platform which is gofic so gofic is predominantly an online digital platform solution wherein we list all of the short dated items make them available or visible to consumers um we incentivize consumption of these items through huge discounts so our idea is that if this product is anyways expiring in 2 months or 3 months let us incentivize consumers through discounts sometimes as i as 50 or 60% uh to ensure that these items get con- consumed and that they are not disposed or sent to trash or to landfills right so offering attractive deals is how, deals is how we encourage discovery of new brands or experimentation with new products or short dated items on our platform and ultimately maximizing their consumption and minimizing their disposal what we also do as part of our solution and i mentioned one word in the beginning which is we are an end to end holistic solution to deal with the problem and i'll tell you two interesting facts of how we also make sure that every single step of the journey of a short dated product is taken care of by us if despite all of our efforts uh, let's say in the end 5% of the inventory or 2% of the inventory at time still stays with us which is not yet expired but not bought by consumers we have tied up with uh, um, the robin hood army which is india's largest network of volunteers who work in the area of food security so we have tied up with the robin hood army here in pune we inform their volunteers and their volunteers come and pick up inventory which is not yet expired please remember it's not yet expired products we donate these items through the robin hood army with the idea being that let these products at least be consumed by somebody a uh, fit uh, uh, or willing uh, or wanting to uh, uh, to have these items right if for some reason the products are not in a uh, in a position to be donated because of certain restrictions from the brand partners and all then we have tied up with companies here in pune we all, who also take care of composting of food waste now remember there if food if it is not composted and just sent to landfills it is a big contributor of methane gas which is a greenhouse um gas it leads to serious environmental impact and that is why in order to minimize that impact we have tried uh, tied up with a partner here in pune that takes care of <clears throat> composting of unexpired uh, expired food products uh, so that uh, the damage of these food items when trashed just in an unorganized manner is minimized right so that's how gofic basically is an end to end solution for brand partners to deal with their short dated inventory which until now is an completely unorganized sector uh, different brands do different things with their un, um, with their short dated inventory some of them uh, sell it to uh, manufacturers of cattle feed so some of these expired or close to expiry products get converted into cattle feed which again is not the most optimal solution because some of these highly processed foods are also not the most optimal for cattle some products are then just se- uh, 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 sold in unorganized channels where these unorganized players redate or relabel a food product and send it back into circulation which is again a health and sef- safety hazard for consumers right so as gofig we are trying to make this entire process of dealing with short dated inventory one organized two transparent 
and three make it linked to uh, uh, the sustainability aspect of it a lot of people shy away from talking about short dated saying are ye to sasta hai are ye to close to expiry hai. but the thing is these are just as good products and somebody needs to put a positive spin on it which is the sustainability aspect of consuming short dated items uh, so it's a clever buy or a smart way of shopping for things right now how do we achieve so we talked about the impact that we are trying to create through uh, gofig as a digital platform and we are leveraging technology and partnerships to do this right let me talk about some of the innovations that we have deployed at our end to ensure that we are able to solve this problem at scale so one is uh, the number one thing that we have done is we have created a tech enabled process in order to aggregate short dated inventory and make it visible to customers um who would be the potential buyers of this inventory right so customers include not only b2c customers but we have also created uh, additional b2b channels for bulk volumes of short dated inventory to be made visible to b2b buyers we have also created like i mentioned it's a first of its kind digital service for brands and uh, manufacturers to manage their short dated inventory um we have also created a lot of information videos blog content for people to come on our platform and read it so if you go to our website gofig.in there are a lot of resources that talk about okay what is the difference between an expiry date or a best buy date uh what is the best way that you as a regular consumer can deal with your short dated inventory and things like that so we are creating a lot of resources content for people to understand this topic in depth lastly what we have done as part of our technology innovation is we have created a dynamic pricing algorithm uh, that ensures that we are able to mix maximize consumption of these products right so how do we do it depending on the category of the item depending on how much shelf life is still remaining on it uh, what is the volume of these products available are are there 100 units of a product or are there thousands of units of a product still lying in the warehouse and very short dated right taking into account multiple factors we deploy a dynamic pricing algorithm where sometimes you will see that on our product on our platform our, our product is discounted at 20% sometimes as high as 60 or 65% just because we want to ensure that the consumption is maximized and there is as little disposal of products as um, possible right uh, i have talked about impact in this slide but some of the things that we do is uh, the number one actually we contribute to five different united nations sustainable development goals uh, which includes the like uh, the like of creating food security for everyone building com uh, sustainable communities um, uh, creating equality of resources for both men and women and, and uh, 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 two others right so we actually through part of this uh, business model we uh, contribute towards five of key united nations sustainable development goals and ultimately our impact is in these areas right so it's in the area of eliminating food wastage second is saving on resources which have gone into manufacturing of these food and cosmetic items the third thing is employment generation through workforce that is deployed deployed in the management handling and delivery of short dated items and the fourth part in terms of impact is minimizing losses for our brand and manufacturing partners so that you know the amount of resources that they have put in to create or these product or manufacturing this this product is at least at least partly recovered by them um now let's talk about uh, the unique selling proposition of our uh, platform like why do consumers um, love us right um they love us because one is we are extremely transparent on our platform we do discounting there are a lot of other platforms that will give you products on discounts sometimes a lot of these products are also short dated but nobody tells you transparently about it customers love us because we are transparent you go to our platform we are building this as india's number one platform for short dated items which are good quality and still intact in taste but the only thing is that it has got low remaining shelf life on it we are transparent we put the date the expiry date or the best buy date right underneath the product so that customers are able to make informed and educated decision whether to buy that item or not secondly customers love us because we offer these items we incentivize them through great deals on premium high quality products the third thing is that we offer them an opportunity to discover and experiment with new brands right so think of it like there are a new a lot of new brands coming into the market offering products also at a premium like new age coffee brands selling coffee at a price point of 400 rupees 
Now, not everybody, even if I look at an ad of such a product, might want to experiment with a new brand at the price point of four hundred rupees. But when it is available at a discount for a limited period of time on GoFit, customers are happy to experiment and discover with new brands, right? So they that behavior of discovering, experimenting with new products and new brands is high on GoFit, just because they are able to get good quality products on discounts, right? And the last reason why customers love us is that we give an opportunity. to elevate their lifestyles to buy better brands premium products like some of the products on our brands are also imported products like lind chocolates which are swiss um, made chocolates and a lot of other products which are imported products so we give customers a chance to elevate their lifestyles but in a sustainable manner both for their pockets and for their environment so ultimately what we offer is both planet friendly and pocket friendly indulgence um brands we talked a little bit about our impact for the brands but mainly for them we help minimize their losses we help them minimize the impact of uh, uh, uh disposal of their products so, i mean even brand partners don't like to do that do that but for lack of a better or efficient channel they have to um, uh, dispose of their products and uh, that is not uh, the most uh, viable uh, solution we help them enhance their brand reputation so we talk about um, our, our brand partners on our platform on our website on our social media channels and promote them as our partners in mission for sustainable consumption and lastly uh, <clears throat> we uh, are also socially i mean we help them be socially and uh, environmentally responsible uh, just wanted to check how much time do i have Uh, Ma'am, still you have a time till five o'clock. Okay, fine. Okay, perfect. All right. So um, this is one of the interesting parts of Cofix business model, and that is that even each business model sometimes uh, it does justice to few of its stakeholders, and the other stakeholders feel that they are left out or that they are not being done enough justice. I'll give you an example of Zomato as or Swiggy delivery uh, as a as a model, right? in that model uh, customers feel happy customers feel happy about the fact ki yaar mujhe ghar pe baith ke acha uh, food deliver ho raha hai but are uh, the delivery partners always happy with the treatment that is meted out to them with the fact that they have to spend hours on the road battling traffic ensuring that they reach a customer's place within stipulated times which is sometimes very tight within 25 minutes battling all the traffic and going to their uh, places right for the pay or the amount of money that they get sometimes uh, in this kind of models and there are many other examples not enough justice is being done to all of the stakeholders of that business model i'm proud to say that with a business model like gofix if we are able to create a win win for all of our stakeholders and i actually consider that we have three stakeholders one is the consumers the other one is our brand partners and the third is the planet or mother earth right So we talked about how consumers get good deals, great products, assured safety and quality products at uh, at pocket friendly and planet friendly prices. For the brands, it's an excellent organized channel to reduce such losses. And we also do in the process justice to the planet, which is we reduce waste, we save precious resources, and we promote sustainable consumption or sustainable lifestyle. So I'm, I'm as a founder, it uh, it gives me an immense joy that I'm able. to uh, uh, build or grow a business model which is doing enough justice to all of our key uh, stakeholders and that is why i think i wanted to link this topic to being planet first or or planet first entrepreneurship right because i very genuinely believe that in this day and age i think even a lot of students might be listening to us today um i think it's very imperative for our generation and for the younger generation to start thinking about business models that also make sense for the environment because otherwise we are standing on a brink right if we don't take care of the planet or of our environment ultimately a lot of things will collapse around us and that's why it's important for our generation and the ones coming after us to think about the planet as an important stakeholder in any business activity or entrepreneurial activity that we do now you might be wondering that this seems to be a model which we are hearing of for the first time and yes that's true we are building this model for the first time in india um but it gives me immense uh, satisfaction when i see that these kind of models have been tried tested and it also works successfully across the globe 
talking about a company called Hong uh, called Green Price in Hong Kong, they work in a similar fashion. Uh, but of course, all of these models that you see on my screen, whether it's in United States, in United Kingdom, in Denmark. They all work in the offline retail models. What you see is basically stores that belong to these companies in certain locations in certain cities, where <clears throat> it's the typical retail model. For us, uh, as a country, I mean, India is a very large country, and we realize that the impact of such a model can only be huge when we also crack the online model, when we are able to reach customers sitting far and wide across India. Because otherwise, given our traffic conditions, given our huge rental costs in premium locations and all, our impact might be limited. So as GoFig, what we are doing is we are actually trying or building this model also in the online space, which globally is not very uh, or not yet uh, cracked or solved for. This is uh, just very quickly, I think I'll, I'll skip through this. But I would like to talk about our impact so far, right? So. I left my corporate job in February this year uh, and from March 2023 onwards, I started working on this concept together with a uh, team of my uh, co-founder, two full-time employees and a couple of student interns who were with us as part of their summer internship program. We were able to build the technology platform and we launched our operations in July 2023. That's when our website gofig.in went live and the entire e-commerce journey was also activated in July 2023. Currently, we are a team of six full-time employees. We have four full-time student interns and a couple of student volunteers who are actually very passionate about the cause of, uh, you know, about the cause that GoFig works for. So we have a team of almost ten plus student volunteers who join us for multiple community engagements from time to time. Currently, as we speak, we are piloting this concept in Pune and to an extent also in Mumbai. Uh, and we want to um, stabilize this model in the cities and then ultimately replicate the success of this model in other parts, including tier two and tier three cities across India. It's a bootstrapped ven uh, venture for now uh, without any external funding. And we hope that in, in a couple of months time, uh, we would want to go, uh, once we have the MVP ready and the pilot ready, we want to go out and start raising funds so that we are able to maximize the impact of uh, the business model. Uh, <clears throat> Currently, um, uh, talking about some of the key performance numbers, actually, this is an old um, uh, slide belonging uh, to last month. I tell you the um, uh, the updated numbers, right? The impact in terms of food savings so far is 350 kgs. So just in a short span of roughly less than three months, we have saved 350 kgs worth of food from going to trash. We have rescued 14... Uh, sorry, 1,700 plus units of food from going to trash. We have executed roughly 200 online orders and in the offline. So we also do a lot of offline activations. In the offline space, we have activated roughly 400 individual customers. So that makes it a, a total of 600 plus individual customers that we have serviced so far. We have a community on WhatsApp called the GoFic community, which has roughly 300 members. And so far, the brand partners on board it. Uh, on the food side, it's roughly 15. On the co cosmetic side, it's roughly uh, seven to eight brands. So that makes us uh, a cohort of 20, roughly 25 brands that we have joined us in this mission for uh, sustainable uh, consumption. Yeah. So I think that's it from my side. I'm going to keep some time for question and answers. But I just have one request for all of you who are listening to uh, me today. Uh, we have an Instagram page, which is at the rate GoFic India. Uh, just check us out because we keep on posting educational content on it from time to time. And some of it is really enlightening, right? Like, did you all know that there's a difference between a best buy date and an expiry date? And so a lot of other things that we talk about, uh, which are interesting, which are fun. So please, please do follow us on at the rate GoFic India. It would be great to have you as part of our journey. So with that, I, I close my presentation. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. Thank you, Disha, ma'am. It was a really a very impactful and uh, knowledgeable session because many things was not clear to us. As you said that in uh, today's world, like uh, students must be aware of all this because the majority students are also participants. So this topic will give them insight. And uh, in addition, uh, I'm also like uh, by knowing that the cause you are adding in your 
business like towards the humanity towards the mother earth towards the consumer as well as towards the uh, the product or the companies those who are uh, making it so it is really a nice efforts and uh, it was a very good cause you are doing like there is one Thank hand you, raised yeah. yeah so one hand raised uh, tejal ma'am please uh, unmute them So, Arun Raja, can you unmute yourself? So, if you don't have any question, then we'll move for other one. Anyone? Yeah. Anyone else is having a query? Um, Tejal ma'am, I think uh, they are yes. not able to unmute still. Uh, even the chat. Can you type in the chat box? Uh, yes. Uh, just open the chat box maybe so they can write in the chat box also. If if they are in viewer mode, they cannot able to write in the chat box. No, I, I'm just uh, telling her to for the few minutes um, make all unmute. I think so, Chirak. Meanwhile, sir, yeah. Meanwhile, can I ask? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, this is really it's a, a great presentation, and uh, I liked a lot about the work that you are doing. Uh, you so so basic, uh, basically, my question is that uh, uh, from where you are uh, getting this idea, and how many competitors are there in the market? Sure. Okay. So my uh, inspiration, Chirag uh, sir, like I said, was um, uh, through some of the, my work and travel experiences across the globe. So I've lived in Germany, in Hong Kong, in US uh, for like a couple of years in each of these countries. And there, as I uh, mentioned, the wave of consumerism is way past what we see in India. And some of these concepts, like I uh, uh, mentioned, are already operating successfully in these countries because the need for managing packaged food and short dated packaged food is very dire in these countries. So when I traveled, for example, to Hong Kong uh, a couple of years back, I saw that there was a small neighborhood store where they would aggregate short dated inventory on a daily basis. And people just walking by in the neighborhood, coming back from offices in the evening, would just stop at the store to see Ki, achha, aaj kya hai? Aaj, uh, is there something that I can buy which I'm going to consume immediately? Uh, let's say um, I have a party in the evening with my friends coming over and I know that I will need five packets of chips which will be consumed. So it does not really matter that the expiry date of the product is in 45 days, right? So I saw people walking into these neighborhood stores buying items which are short dated because one, um, it was uh, definitely a pocket friendly deal and two is over a period of time that awareness also started building in that, hey, this is a good thing to do also for the planet, right? So my inspiration for the idea has been from my travel uh, across the globe uh, especially in the western countries talking about competition um, to the best of my knowledge because i've been working in this segment for almost seven months there is no other platform in india currently that is specifically catered catering to short dated products there are a lot of offline unorganized channels doing this but again not in a transparent manner which is in the best interest of consumers and two is um, uh, not in a manner which is fully and ethically environmentally compliant so we are a one of its kind business model in india at the moment to the best of my knowledge yeah <clears throat> i think uh, yeah that's uh, that's it from my side uh, so uh... Uh, just elaborating the question again that uh, have you faced any uh, because in India there is a very less awareness about all this stuff yeah. as you told that uh, you are a single player and it's an unorganized market uh, still it is there yep. so have you faced any uh, issues like a legal actions or uh, people are not getting the concept like uh, something like that yeah definitely so because it's a topic which was previously not talked about that openly 
लाइक नो बडी रियली टॉक अबाउट की इतने सारे प्रोडक्ट रिटेल में शेल्फ में आते हैं वो कभी ना कभी एक्सपायर होते होंगे उसका क्या होता है सो डेफिनेटली बींग द फर्स्ट मूवर इन एनी कैटेगरी इज चैलेंजिंग इट कम्स विथ इट्स ओन सेट ऑफ हर्डल्स एंड रिस्क राइट बिकॉज Uh, you're talking about a concept which is previously unheard of you have to spend a lot of time educating consumers building that awareness uh, so we do that through content both on social media through blogs and all but yes it's a it's an uphill task which we have uh, taken over as far as the legal issues are concerned right so uh, one thing is very clear that we only sell products which are one not expired and two which pass the necessary quality safety checks both at our brand partners ends and at our end right so we only sell products um, which meet this requirements right the third thing that we do is we only work with or we work with as of now reputed brand partners so these are all large fmcg giants uh, or even smaller companies but who have set systems and processes in place because we realize that when we are in a in a building a segment for short dated foods it is important to give that trust and confidence to our consumers and that is why we work in a manner that is extremely uh, you know driven by proper practices whether it's selecting the right partners whether it's implementing certain safety and quality checks at our end so we are doing that and and by that i mean these actions help us become legally sort of safeguarded because we are not doing anything wrong we are just promoting a product Uh, which is good quality, high in taste, intact, and everything. The only thing is, it has got less remaining shelf life on it. Thank you so much, and I have followed you on the Insta. Thank <laughs> you. Sir. I look forward to having at least fifty-six new followers after I uh, uh, wrap up this session. I see that there are fifty-six participants. So yeah. Uh, Tejal, ma'am, I would like to. Uh, Show or the share the memento, e memento, due to the virtual session, as a token of love, as appreciation from the I Triple E. Thank so you. So this is as a token of love, as a remembrance from us. Thank you. I would love to have a soft copy of this as well. It's uh, this is really nice. Thank you so much. We'll share And, <laughs> with you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any question from the audience still? If uh, someone have the query. Yeah, Alpha Mem. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Nisha Mem, what is your uh, business model? Uh, like revenue business model of this Nofic that okay. you are working on? Because yeah. you are Shah and I am also Shah, so the very first thing that came into mind is like, <laughs> yeah. If you can answer that question, yeah, yeah, no, definitely, that's a very good question. Because that may attract other people from other cities to collaborate, even young students to join the cause. That if the revenue model is really in, uh, in, and what's the take on that? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, that's a very good question. So I think uh, you rightly mentioned that you, I am a Shah and you are a Shah, and as Gujaratis. and i think i was also very clear a lot of people ask me is this an ngo is this a social enterprise i say i reply that this is a social enterprise but we are not an ngo because i think as coming from a, a, a gujarati entrepreneurial family i do believe that any business needs to sustain itself right so i want to build this as a business model which does justice to everyone ultimately everyone has something to positive to take home from this business model and that is what i am building so yeah Uh, i think that's very clear that we are definitely looking at also generating certain revenues out of this business model currently our business uh, or the revenue uh, come in from two aspects one is the sale of items so we uh, procure these items at deep discounts from our brand partners and pass it on to consumers at sweet discounts right so there is some sort of margin for us that stays in between which helps okay. us generate our revenues and keep us going second thing is we generate revenues from our brand partners because we offer them a, a an organized way of dealing with their short dated inventory think of it right amazon today if a product of your brand or your company expires at an amazon warehouse amazon charges 10 rupees per product just to destroy your product right so of course as of now we are providing all of these services in a complimentary manner but the idea is that so we we charge for for some services from our brand partners but the idea is that eventually 
this becomes like an, an organized way for brands to deal with their short dated inventory and ultimately a business case or a revenue model for us <clears throat> later on as we mature as a platform when we have a lot of people a lot of footfall and traffic on our platform uh, there could be other sources of revenue for example providing data insights to brands so it is not individual user level data like i'm not going to be saying that this is a consumer sitting in pune buying this but uh, an aggregated report right all of us are engineers and we know how valuable data is to understand certain trends right so aggregated level of user insights ki okay uh, let's say pune uh, this is the split between consumers buying or interested in short dated inventory this is the category that's moving fast and also that could be a source of revenue in the future once we grow to scale another revenue model could be just from uh, the listing and creating visibility of products so think of it like nike amazon everybody charges heavy fees for uh, uh, a brand to list their products right because it's an additional sales channel or a visibility channel for these products right so that is again something that we would be looking at once we grow in scale so yeah definitely we are uh, you know uh, looking at steady streams of revenue to stabilize the business model because only then it can grow to the kind of impact that we want this to grow to yeah i was i was just visiting your website and the very first thing that came into mind was lint chocolates <laughs> which otherwise yeah, are so yeah, costly yeah, yeah. so costly based out of uh, we are in i am in surat i am in surat in surat yeah we don't service surat. it is not available in surat order i would be happy to ask my team to send you an order so if you like <laughs> go ahead and please send no no definitely yeah sorry uh, someone was saying something i think the dish is not available in surat yeah if you i mean uh, just off topic but if you select others as a city and just place still place the order uh, i think i mean i would be happy to just service the orders for people who just uh, attended us right now like i said we are piloting this in pune and mumbai just because we want to gather certain learnings quickly and then take it to other cities yeah any other questions from the audience okay so once again uh, on behalf of the team i heartily thankful to you ma'am for sharing the ideas and views and giving a new vision to the new generation that this can be also the one direction to work with so thank you once again thank, thank you, you so much it has been my pleasure yeah. being here and uh, thank you so much for having me yeah thank you uh, let's take one group photo also tejal ma'am then thank you over to thank you, you so much man. disha ma'am yeah Thank you, Nita. Thank you so much, Disha, ma'am. Yeah, Alpha, ma'am. Yes. And I guess uh, she left. Yes. No, I'm no, no, here. No. I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank oh. you so much. The pleasure was mine <laughs> to be with you all. No, it was really very inspiring. In fact, that there are so many small, small problems that go unnoticed, and if they are really catered by engineers who have good. uh solutions and good platforms and as you said you can derive insights out of all these things so yes if they are really chalked down into a manner it is going to really change our planet so it was really very interesting idea and we look forward to have gofig in other cities as well very soon thank you so much hopefully very soon yeah yeah definitely <laughs> So on this note, thank you all the participants. I would like uh, participants to share their feedback of both days. If any participants wants to share their feedback, we request them to raise their hands and uh, we can have a feedback about it about the two days of the session. Is anybody from the participants? Yes, Hinal Shah has raised the hand. 
तेजल मैम आई थिंक यू नीड टू हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल यस यू आर ऑडिबल यस वेरी नाइस इंटरेक्टिव सेशन इन ऑल द uh experts has delivered a very nice uh informative talks madam and i am really thankful to organizer and i tripper sps chapter also thank you so much thank, thank you inal so shah for your lovely words this we would like to hear from inal shah madam is uh, with me in the indus so we have spent around 8 years together <laughs> so yes, thank you so much yes any other participants want to share their feedback please raise their hands and please share your feedback okay so i guess uh, when there are not there is nothing to be said it means that everything was very nicely done yes. and you all really enjoyed because i was looking forward for both kind of feedback both positive and negative yes i do look into the feedback form immediately when they are filled <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the feedback form really says a lot thank you all the participants on this note i would like to formally present my vote of thanks with immense gratitude and pleasure i am I extend my heartfelt thanks to the remarkable women of this leading technology who have graced us with their presence at this distinguished event organized by the ieee sps gujarat section i strongly personally believe that this event has a testament to the incredible achievements and contribution of women in the field of technology first and foremost i would like to express my profound gratitude to our distinguished speakers advocate punit bhashi ms disha shah ms nirali bhatia and our panelists dr marina jhon ms ridhima duvedi and ms purbi pandya along with our moderator dr mamta pillai their insights expertise and passion for technology have really enlightened us all and I, i would say that they have been instrumental in making this event a resounding success which i think that all the participants would definitely agree to their willingness to share their knowledge experience has undoubtedly left us an, in, an inenquible mark on our hearts and mind i thank you all also i would like to extend my sincere thanks to our entire organizing committee for their tireless efforts in putting out events together the whatsapp group is still continuously ringing every now and then what world committee world 2.0 committee so it has been round the clock working to have this dedication meticulous planning and every attention has been given to detail of and has been instrumental in giving us a seamless and rich experience that we are having in two, two, in these two days my heartfelt appreciation also goes to our ieee sps student branches of sarvajanik college of engineering and technology ckp marwadi university and gset for their support we are grateful for your contribution to this event success a special mention and gratitude to all the attendees and participants who joined us in this two days event i would say that without your active engagement your insightful questions and enthusiasm definitely this event has been a vibrant and it, this event was very dynamic and vibrant lastly i would like to acknowledge the ieee sps gujarat section and women in signal processing for their continuous efforts in promoting technological advancements and providing a platform for such a meaningful discussion and collaboration in conclusion i must say that this two days events has not only celebrated the achievements of women in leading technologies but has also inspired us just like today's session to strive for excellence and innovation in our own endeavors we are living here today may we all carry with us the knowledge insight and inspiration get gathered from this gathering thank you once again to all the esteemed speakers participants our student branch sponsors and organizing committee for this event making it a memorable one we definitely look forward for to such future endeavors and will continue to shape the future of the technology with this note thank you once again now without a further ado i would like to request tejal ma'am to share our participant uh, our winner list for pictures on which i guess most of the uh, students are eagerly waiting for so in pictures on the third prize goes to 
the topic on smart farming for society which was from which was uh, done by arya lokhandwala deepak nair and neha chaudhary from scad gujarat second position goes to topic uh, topic on drowsy drivers a very innovative idea that how as soon as a flick of second if the driver feels sleepy how they can have a technology that makes them aware and it was really very interesting so kudos to fanil chauhan and ridhika cheruku for their wonderful and innovative ideas on drowsy drivers and the first position goes to antenna mavericks yes their idea their implementation everything was very interesting and that goes we uh, have we congratulate pavan murthy and shama marathe from bmsc karnataka so a big round of applause to all the pitathon winners and we really look forward that we have such more innovative ideas from this young generation and let us as disha ma'am rightly said let us work together to move our planet one step ahead in this global cause thank you all the winners list will be also uploaded on the our website right we look forward that you all go through our website and check out other sessions as well and uh, prize money will be gift vouchers will be awarded to the uh, to the winners on the uh, what we can say email id that was generated the email id that with, with, with which they registered the event madam please announce the rule for the attendance also for the final certificate of award yes so as we already mentioned i'll write as nita ma'am said i'll just like to reiterate once again the attendance criteria was 80% which i already mentioned on the day one that at least uh, you have attended 80% of the sessions and only those attendees will be getting the certificate of part attendant participation uh, for the event uh, we have also given one rajesh unique id i hope all the students have all the participants have given that id during by when they are filling the feedback form so i hope that does not create any confusion i hope you have used your id correctly in filling the feedback form thank you all so with this uh, we are now declaring our event uh, finally as uh, we are we had a lot of things to share but due to time constraints and other things and availability of the speakers we managed this two days but we really look forward that you all are going to join us again in our future endeavors at ieee sps gujarat sections and the events we will keep you posted uh, we generally never dissolve the groups that have been whatsapp groups that have been dissolved don't be uh, don't worry we won't share any unnecessarily flyers or anything but whenever we find any meaningful information that might interest you we will definitely post it in this groups so uh, if you want that you get direct update for such events do remain in the whatsapp group we are not we never dissolve this whatsapp group they are all they are used by us to share upcoming events and upcoming events posters in the whatsapp group thank you all Yes, Hansa ma'am, Mita ma'am. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Thank you so much, Now Uncle ma'am. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> we really look forward for all the participants uh, to say uh, at least some participants to uh, give their honest feedback of the two days, how they really find uh, found the sessions, and uh, yes, I guess her. If winner of the picha, winner of the pichathon team is uh, in the group, then they can also share their views. Yes, is because we have introduced this idea very first time in the Volt event. So, what is your opinion? Uh, uh, would it be considered for the next event, or uh, what you like? Can you suggest few more ideas that we can include in the next phase of our Volt event? Yes, anyone? Any participants from the picture Yes. I think they have just seen their result. <laughs> mm. Yes, they celebrate. <laughs> they are in celebration mode. Yeah, <laughs> celebration, celebration mode. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. okay. Yeah. Tejal, ma'am. 
they can unmute themselves. Actually, ma'am, uh, we are very grateful for IEEE Society for, uh, for giving, presenting our ideas, and we are very grateful that uh, such a platform is introduced for our ideas to be pitched. And the uh, I would like to suggest that uh, a round extra round should be added for more complex and uh, you know uh, so that the competition or the pitchathon can give more and amazing ideas. Definitely, definitely, we'll uh, take up your uh, suggestion uh, next time because uh, this we had planned in the last moment and we had a very short time, so we cannot include that in this uh, phase. So definitely, in the next phase of the whole event, we'll include your suggestion. Thank you, ma'am. Any else? Yeah, so no, we can, can wrap up the session. And decisions? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Decisions. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you, Meeta, ma'am. Thank you, Alpa, ma'am. Tejal, ma'am. A big thank you to and you. Big congratulations <laughs> to all organizing teams. And big congratulations yeah. to you also. And yes, big thank you to you also. Yeah. Because everything is depend on you at that time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Inal, ma'am. Yes. Okay, okay. 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 So, so see you all soon in the next vault event. Thank you.